Curious Giraffe Show for curious kids of all ages, where there's always a song and no question is wrong. All right, so I think you might have caught on, but every time we sing this first song, the last verse will introduce the topic of the day. So let's start Giraffe. with the eagle. Right, thank you. Here we go. Giraffe looked over at Eagle and said, Why was I born to walk? Why were you born to fly? Eagle just shrugged and gave a high five. Yeah, we all share one big sky. Oh yeah, you can change it. Share one big sky, share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, we're different and we know it, but we all get along. Cause we can all share. We can all share, we're different but we all belong. Giraffe looked over at Zebra and said, Why do I have spots? Why do you have stripes? Zebra just shrugged and said, We come in all types, but we all share one big sky. Oh yeah. Share one big sky, share one big sky. We're different and we know it, but we all get along. Cause we can all share, and we can all care. We're different, but we all belong. Jaguar. Giraffe looked over at Jaguar and said, Why am I so tall? Why are you so fast? Jaguar just shrugged and said, It's all a blast. And we all share one big sky. Oh yeah. Share one big sky. We're different and we know it, but we all get along. Cause we can all share, and we can all care. We're different, but we all belong. Turtle. Giraffe looked over at Turtle and said, Why do I live in the open? Why do you live in a shell? Turtle just shrugged, they both suit us well. But we all share one big sky, oh yeah. Share one big sky, share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, we're different and we know it, but we all get along. Cause we can all share and we can all care. We're different, but we all belong. All right, so that last verse said, Why do I live in the open? Why do you live in a shell? So what do you think our new topic will be today? Aurelia. Homes. 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 Where we live. And what's the same and what's different. Now, I have a beautiful turtle today that I'm going to share with you. But for real, this turtle has been well loved. And yes, one eye is gone but we love our turtle just the way it is just like we love our families and even our home sometimes maybe something's not quite right but we're still glad to have them so um, I guess we'll start turtle around this way and um, so sometimes we have more than one home so I'm going to just ask you to think about one of the homes that you have known well and lived in. Choose and um, have you always lived in that home? Let's uh, think for a minute and then let's have your thoughts. Yes. Oh, what's what's the definition of like home? Like, oh, I mean, oh, it's like a oh. house, but is it like a place that you hang out all the time? Or is it like just somewhere where you just apparently live? Ooh. Or is it just somewhere you just go to a place and you like it, and then you come back sometimes? Like, what is home? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, let's talk together. What is home? I want to respond. Monet. Most likely a place you feel safe in. Oh, I like that. You feel nice and comfortable and you aren't stiff. and 
Right, right. You aren't stiff there. You're comfortable there. What else about uh, your home or Well, it's also home? a place where you live and you can go to after you're like, it's say if you were out and then you can also go back to it. It's like a place you can always go to. Yes, yes. All right. So your homes now, have you always lived in the same home? No. No, Aurelia. <laughs> Would you like to tell us about some of the homes you've lived? I've lived in a lot of homes. Yes, a lot. Me too. I've had a lot of homes too. Go yeah. ahead, tell us about you. So, I have two homes now. Mm -hmm. um, I have my dad's ho house and my mom's. Mm -hmm. And um, I've moved a lot with my mom. Yeah. I don't know, like... Think, and we're moving again, so right. this will be our eighth time. Wow, wow. So I just want you to know that my children and I also, my children went back and forth to their dad's home and my home, and we moved a lot of times too. <laughs> so I really know what it's like, and I hope you enjoy your next home. <laughs> All right. My, but, um, my favorite home yes. was the one I was born at was the one you were it was born huge. in. It, was, it had a huge backyard, and it was awesome. You love the yard. And um, our neighbors, who are still my friends, we used to run around the whole entire house. Whoa. Down in the basement and out the, and then across the yard and back in the front yard and then back in the front door. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a long way. Uh, Monet. Um, well, me, Max, and Xavier, mm -hmm. um, we lived in, we, um, moved once because mm -hmm. we lived in a house when we were like babies and stuff we had to move at three years old because the house was too small mm -hmm. so we had to move to a bigger one right and so i've been living at the house i currently live in mm -hmm. since i was pretty much three so oh great great but you did your family needed to move because you needed more space yeah it was that's too a small. good reason for moving um maya and then you yeah. Well, um, I think I moved, when I was a baby, I think I moved, I think I moved three times, but when I was a baby, I think I moved to Northampton on Olive Street, okay. and then after that, I moved to the house I'm living in now, which I love the best. Great. It's nice to love your home. I yes, Matt. Question, because based on the definitions, one of my versions of home, I'm not trying to be funny, would be GameStop. Because you spend a lot of time there. Yeah. And you feel Sometimes comfortable stuff. there. Yeah, and I have a lot of fun. So I'm like, definitely. Okay. So that home feels home-like to you. Yeah. I, I will. I can go with that. Lila, <laughs> did you want to say something about your home? I moved one time. Okay. I moved from all the way from Philadelphia to here. That's a big move. Philadelphia is in. And the I moved when I was like, I moved when I was two and a half. Two and a half. Do you remember moving? Yes. You do? Wow. I've always been curious when our memories start. So, sort of. All right. So I have invited someone who works very hard to help people to have a home. Some of us who have always had a home, we take it for kind of for granted. But many of us, including my own family, could use a little help in figuring out how to have a home so their kids can feel safe and secure. And have, and have a good place to come home to. So um, I have invited Megan McDonough from the Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. Megan. Hi, Dorothy. Thank you so much for coming. We are so glad you can be here. Thank now, you. Now, Megan's job is as the executive director. So she is the person that people come to to learn more and more about it. So that's why I called and invited her. So I'm gonna let her have my seat and she's gonna share with you. And if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Thanks, so, Dorothy. Okay. Thanks everybody for taking the time to learn more about Habitat for Humanity. Um, so we build houses in the community with volunteers. And Dorothy actually has been one of our volunteers before. So I, I was really excited that she called up for me to come and talk to you, all of you guys. The, the thing that we do that everybody knows the most about is we build houses. So this is a picture of a house that we built up in Turner's Falls and the family that was going to buy this house. So what we do is we raise 
we do a lot of fundraising and we get a lot of volunteers to help out so that we can make the house as affordable as possible. Because uh, buying a house can be really expensive and sometimes people, even if they're hard working and they have a job, they can't always afford to buy a house. And some people live in a house where they have too many people for the, for the home that they're in. So there'll be maybe three kids in a bedroom and it's too crowded. So they want to try and buy a home, but they can't afford it. So one of the things that we do is we try and make it affordable so that someone can buy a house. But we couldn't do it without the community, without a bunch of people volunteering. Do you have a question? Yeah, what type of houses do you build? So we build uh, mostly new houses. And this is a picture of a house that we're going to be building in Amherst. So um, next year, we're going to start building these, this is going to be two homes that are attached down the middle, so it's called a duplex. Um, they're all framed with wood, so we get volunteers with hammers and nails, and then we insulate them really well so that people will have low electric bills and heating bills. Yes? How do you get a picture of the house before you actually build it? Well, that is pretty cool, isn't it? So there is an architect here in Amherst that used a computer program to make this as a, so he drew this in a computer. Do you guys, like, I don't want to sound mean or stingy, but do you guys destroy land to build the houses? So we always look for places to build houses that uh, will be good places for homes. So we wouldn't want to build a house where there was habitat for an animal. Or we wouldn't want to build a house on some place that was going to take away farmland. Um, we're building this house right here in a place called uh, Hawthorne Farm. But there was an old house here that got torn down. So we're building this new one exactly on the spot where the old house was. So we're not taking away any extra land. Um, and it's right near the university, so people will be able to get to the college, they'll be able to go to jobs, there's near buses, people can walk places. So we thought that was a good spot for a house. That's a good question, though. Yeah. How long does it usually take for you to build a house? It takes us a long time because we don't do it every day. So when a construction company builds a house, they have a whole lot of workers who come you know, five days a week and are building all day long. We tend to build about three days a week. So like Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays is what we're doing right now at our project in East Hampton. So we think it's going to take us about a year and a half to build that house. This is a picture of some of the volunteers that are building a house right now in East Hampton. Um, and you'll notice that there's a, a lot of women in this picture, which is one thing that we try and promote as well, is because uh, there's not as many women who usually do construction. But we think that uh, women should have an opportunity to learn and build as well. So we got uh, most of the people doing the construction on this house are women. Just uh, last week, we had this many people there all installing the insulation. So we had about 50 people helping out then one day. Um, about, like, do you need any specific skill to volunteer to help construct the house? So you have to be at least 16 years old to help construct the house because there's labor laws that say children aren't supposed to do dangerous things like construction work. And, uh, but there aren't any specific skills. We always look for people who have lots of good skills to lead the crews, but then we take people who are unskilled so that they can learn more. We, and it, when you guys are in high school, um, we also work with the technical high schools. So the Smith Vocational Technical School, which is over in Northampton, they're doing all the plumbing for this house. So those kids are going to be helping to build the homes. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have a note? You look like you might have a question. I might. All right. Well, if you do. You, oh, yes, I do. Um, I forgot it for like two seconds. No problem. Um, what do you do to volunteer? Like, what, what do people do when they are volunteering? Well, that's a good question. So what we ask everyone who wants to volunteer is that they go to an orientation and they, you can sign up on their, our website. And I think that when this show is being produced, they'll put the website up there so everybody who's watching can go to the website. And at the orientation, we tell people how to sign up. 
So volunteers come, and like on this day, they went to the construction site and helped insulate, put the insulation inside the house. But we also have volunteers who do things that aren't at the construction site. We have volunteers who help us raise money. We have volunteers who help us plan for our next project. We have volunteers who help uh, the new homeowners learn how to uh, be a homeowner. So there's a lot of different things people can do. Um, how do you raise money, though? What okay. do people do to raise money? Well, Dorothy's got a, a, other things to talk about here, too, it looks like. So, but I, I, I like your questions, everybody. Yeah, you know, Aurelia, I love that we have started the conversation and that you have more questions. And I can show, I can answer some of those and I can put you in touch with Habitat. And that's what Megan has described to us, that on the show there will be the contact information for all people who would like to know how to raise the money and how to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful effort in our community. So thank you, Megan. Yes, thank you, Dorothy, and thank you, everybody, for your good questions. All right. Bye. So, Aurelia, I'm delighted that your mind is going now. That's what's curious. The curious giraffe and now a curious turtle are curious Georgia and curious George. Oh. I didn't realize we created a curious George. Okay. <laughs> I just figured that out. Yes. Okay. Now I'd like you to try a song about Habitat that was written, the first verse was written by a man who he and his wife were part of the volunteers and support team at Habitat. And he wrote the first verse. I liked it so much that I added more verses. So we're going to sing Habitat Hits the nail on the head. There's always going to be those three beats. So get your hammers ready and let's begin. Habitat hits the nail on the head. Hammering home what the golden rule said. Do unto others as you'd have them do. Habitat hits the nail on the head. Habitat sauce. The line on the board, making a home someone can afford. Do unto others as you'd have them do. Habitat sauce, the line on the board. Habitat builds the walls all around, making them strong and making them sound. Do unto others as you'd have them do. Habitat the walls all around, habitat puts the roof overhead, keeping you snug when you crawl into bed. Do unto others as you have them do. Habitat puts a roof overhead, habitat helps you build your own home. And when you're done, it's a home that you own. Do unto others as you'd have them do. Habitat hits. You build your own home. Thank you. Thank you. That was um, says a lot, but it, it sings my joy of knowing how neighbors can help neighbors in all kinds of ways. Now it's time for our exercise stretch. Let's put the animals to rest here for a minute. Okay, good. All right, everybody stand up and stretch. Oh, mm -mm. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's start with our, our legs. Let's bend down low. Exercise your body and exercise your mind. Learn about the world around and exercise kind. Do it again. Exercise your body and exercise your mind. Learn about the world around and exercise kind. Very nice. Have a seat. Okay. Now, today's mystery box has a story in it, as usual. But it's a little bit different. It's a story that grows. How many of you have ever heard the story, The House That Jack Built? No? 
when I was growing up, that was in, um, but we're going to do the house that Habitat built. And we're going to create the story together. So I'm going to just start with, oh, I have to do one more page to help. Okay. I'm going to ask when I hand you part of the story, if you hold it so that it can be seen, okay? And just hold it still and you'll know what to do with it, okay? Ready? This is the house that Habitat built. And you all say it after me. This is the house that Habitat built. This is the mother who worked on her house that Habitat built. Ready? This is the mother who worked on the house that Habitat built, and this is the house that Habitat built. Hold it up there so it's easy to see. Okay, ready? This is the team who supported the mother. Everybody? This is the team who supported the mother. This is the mother who worked on the house. This is the house that Habitat built. All right, good. All right, and it's interesting, we had a question about the land. This is the land that was given to the team who supported the mother who worked on the house that Habitat built. All right, good. Now, I was thinking lumber, and I was thinking this could be like the, the kitchen, or nails, lumber and nails, great. These are the materials that were brought to the land, the land that was given to the team to the, who supported the mother who built the house that Habitat built. Okay, this is harder than I thought, but we're doing all right. Okay, now, these are the businesses. These are different businesses, business names in our Pioneer Valley, okay? These are the businesses who supplied the materials that were brought to the land that was given to the team who supported the mother who worked on her house, the house that Habitat built. Okay. And who are we up to? Okay, we'll come back this way. All right. These are the volunteers who worked the with the materials. Oh, wait. Yeah, that the businesses supplied. How did I do that? These are the volunteers. <laughs> that's, the that's okay. Grown ups make mistakes too. That's one of my best things as a teacher is saying it's okay to make mistakes. These, uh, did you figure it out, Maya? How should I kind it go? Of just a little. Okay, go ahead. These are the volunteers. Volunteers that. Oh no, I keep forgetting. That, that, oh, that maybe the you businesses that the businesses support. <laughs> okay. And that no. All right, I'm going to go a little quicker now. Okay, so, hmm. Okay, these are the volunteers that were glad for the businesses who gave the materials for the land, and that. The Four team years. used to support the, the mother, mother who worked on the house that Habitat built. Else. Okay, and this is the, I'm going to do the last few. I'll just hold them. Okay, I'll do the extras. You guys hold yours clearly. Okay, this is the contractor okay. who trained the volunteers who, you, who were glad for the businesses that contributed the materials for the land for, and the team who supported the mother who worked on the house that Habitat built. Okay. And these are the donations that helped the contractor to ask the businesses for the materials to bring to the land to give, oh, working. this is hard. I hope the kids at home can follow this. All right. This is the, the donations. The donations that the contractor used to train the volunteers to thank the businesses who provided the materials for the land, for the and the team who supported the mother who built the house that Habitat built. And the very last part of the story is these are the kids who get to live in the house that Habitat 
built. All right. Wow. What's we the have giraffe to head in there? The, that's for Dorothy to write any new ideas with. That yeah, actually can go with our head. other giraffe friends. Are we okay. going to put everything together on the land? Let's do it on the land. Go ahead. Put the things together. Right. So, okay, so this is, it should be right there. Nothing. <laughs> All right, there you go. Put the house well, there. I want to put the house. I okay. Want to put it right here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have to finish up, but a house becomes a home when there's love there. So everybody, sit back, please. Once you put your pieces it's there, the and we're going to have our go. last song. Then we should go buy the house. Don't let the money drop the kid. The money's important. Okay. It's all important. Every piece of that is important. Very nice. So once there's a house, it becomes a home when the family moves in and the love is there. So let's sing this last song. It's almost like tucking this new family into their home. Ready? Home is where the heart is, where I live. for joining us today and considering all the curious things there are to learn about our own homes and about other homes. So, everybody, let's say goodbye. Bye, Bye. everybody. We'll see you next time. Join us for the Curious Giraffe Show for curious kids of all ages. It's the place I learn forgiveness. For we all make mistakes It's the place I learn acceptance Even 